Welcome to guests and visitors. We are so glad that you are here. Thank you to everybody who has helped to prepare us for worship and who is helping us to lead this worship service. A few announcements. Could Pastor Bob and Pastor Steve and Pastor Ann please join me up front? Uh, we have some exciting uh, and bittersweet components of our worship service. Come on up, gentlemen. So Pastor Bob and Pastor Steve are re-retiring. <laughs> Takes a while to uh, work yourself out of the saddle and uh, so glad that you guys have served with us. Yeah, and there she is sneaking in behind. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so Pastor Bob has served as Trinity's wellness pastor over the past year, over a year, uh, and Pastor Steve has served as Trinity's visitation pastor. Well, at the end of this month, both of them will be concluding those parts of their ministries and doing some different things. Candace is retiring here um, in a few weeks, and so Pastor Steve and Candace will be traveling. But yay! Yeah, yeah, yay for them. And Pastor Bob is still going to just continue to travel and have more flexibility, see friends and family. But both of them said that they would be willing to help out in a bind and still participate in the life of Trinity in different capacities. But God is faithful in not leaving us stranded because Pastor Ann Jacobson is coming on board. She's kind of going to be working her way in the next few weeks as we kind of transition over and then being with us more fully um, in June. And then also in June, Joanne Schott is returning as well. She has been able to care for their granddaughter uh, this past year. And so uh, as Lydia continues to improve with health, um, then that means that Joanne is able to be with us a little bit more. She'll still be traveling back and forth to Iowa. But do you guys want to say anything? <laughs> you got nothing? Yeah. Yeah. So we have um, two, I know, but I can get it real fast. So uh, we have two sheet cakes for the gentleman and a piece of cake for Pastor Ann because we're going to install her coming up in a few weeks. But can we just thank uh, Pastor Steve and Pastor Bob for their ministries. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. We want to keep in our prayers Caden David as he is welcomed to God's family through the waters of baptism at our second service. And thanks to Jean and Pat Benson for the flowers on the altar. Pat uh, has some events coming up later, and so the flowers help prepare us for that. Roger Lee, hey, speaking of flowers, I, I see that you are bouquetting things as well. Thank you for uh, letting me have two and a half minutes of your worship time. First of all, I wanted to extend my appreciation and congratulations to both Pastor Bob and Pastor Steve on their re-retirement. I have that written here, so you copied me. But hopefully it'll stick this time, guys. Okay, during your working years, I know you both were great influences to your families, your churches, your communities. And that's a little bit of what I want to speak about today is service to our community. <clears throat> you have all noticed and appreciated the flower planters that have been placed along our streets. There will be 60 large planters, 25 of those are used during the winter time also, 10 window boxes, and this year they are adding smaller planters to the Veterans Memorial Park. The project is called Downtown Alive. <clears throat> Burgeon supplies all the product and labor. Chris and Mara personally select and plant everything. This was done weeks ago, and the planters are now hardening off, and they'll be out before Memorial Day, weather permitting, of course. <clears throat> Each morning at 5 o'clock, their daughter Bridget takes the truck, the watering, the fertilizer, and, and tends to the flowers and they are guaranteed successful. My, my point with this is the costs add up, and it's nearly $25,000 $25, to do this project. The DL newspaper has run ads listing last year's donors and soliciting funds for this year. 
They suggested three-digit donations, i.e. $500. Well, I thought that's more than what most people want to give, but they'd still like to be part of the Downtown Alive project. So I applied for a Thrivent grant for $250. Our action team, and that's the people wearing the gray Thrivent Live Generously t-shirts, we potted 50 red geraniums yesterday, <clears throat> and today, for a nice donation, you can receive one. And you can get bragging rights for supporting this community project. By the way, when I took the Thrivent money to Burgeons to get our product for today, they applied the entire grant to the Downtown Alive project and gave me all the product we needed. Our action team will be in the entry and fellowship hall to assist you and answer all the questions you might have about planting and caring for this red geranium. Credit for this project will be listed as Trinity Lutheran Thrivent Financial. Now, let me remind you <clears throat> that you are not just getting an ordinary red geranium. These are Polargonium calliope medium dark red geraniums. You will be the envy of your neighborhood. And all of them will say you truly have a green thumb. Thank you, sir. Okay. Join us next Sunday at our 8.30 service. It's a youth service, and 10.30 it's grad recognition, so keep all of those young men and women and their family in our prayers as they tr transition to this next phase of life. And then the next Sunday, May 19th, is All Music Sunday, and that's one worship service at 9 a.m., so we hope you can join us for both of those events. Those are all of the announcements that I have, and so we continue now with our gathering hymn. We're going to sing verses 1 and 4. Verses 1 and 4 of hymn number 385. You may remain seated for this first hymn. stand as you are able. As we continue with our confession and forgiveness, we take a moment of silence to reflect to God what's in our hearts and on our minds. God of new life, you have created and redeemed all things through the gift of your Son. Yet we often live as though it makes no difference for us. We choose to remain stuck in old patterns, cling to the familiar and safe, and refuse opportunities to step out in courage and faith. Forgive us. Amen. The Lord is risen and with his resurrection brings a new day, a new chance to make new choices and renewal between people, creation and creator. Rejoice that you have been forgiven and called sisters and brothers of our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well done. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> In peace, love.
let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house and for all who suffer hear their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord this is go ahead Victory for our God, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory. Let us pray. God, you have sanctified all things by your grace, and nothing is unclean to you. Open our minds to your vision of inclusion, that we would mirror your mercy in the world. For the sake of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. While Bill gets up here from the sound booth, a couple things. One is please take a, uh, some time today before you go home and look at the uh, st high school students' art. They're quite amazing uh, individuals, and the art them itself is, is kind of unique in, in all the differences of, that are reflected in that artwork that are in their minds and lives. Also, I just want to bring your attention then to the uh, yellow bulletin here, or insert, uh, the song, There is a Redeemer, is what we're singing about. And um, the author, Melody Green, talks about the gift. And uh, there's two gifts, I guess, the gift of Jesus and the gift of the teachings. Uh, in our second or first reading in Acts, the second part of it, you're going to hear a little bit about teachings. What's, what's this really saying? And then the gospel acclamation, which is quite short, is also about being thankful for that, um, that gift we received, which is the teachings of Jesus.
I don't know about you, but I like getting company. And the text today speaks of three types of company that come to these people. From Acts 10, 1 through 17, 34 through 48. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon at about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. He stared at him in terror and said, what is it, Lord? And he answered, your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simeon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had left, he called two of his slaves and a devout soldier from the ranks of those who served him. And after telling them everything, he sent them to Joppa. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. And then the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Now, while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of this vision that he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simeon's house and were standing by the gate. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how we went about by doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? So we ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they invited them to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, I'd like to invite all of our little shavers to come forward. Miss Laura has something amazing in her hands. <laughs> what do we got? Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Okay, everybody in the circle. Today, so who's out of the circle? When we're in, everybody in the circle, who's, out, who's not in the circle right now? Who's not in the circle? If we're in this room, are those people in the circle? Is April in the circle? No. Is choir? No. We are the only ones, right? In the circle. She's in. Yes. Ireland's in. You got it. <laughs> so today's story, there was this guy named Peter. And Peter grew up knowing the rules. He knew who was in, who was a part of the faith community, like their church. He knew all the special rules of the food they had to eat and everything like that. And he learned something really important today. So it's kind of like this, where there was only a certain group of people that were in and belonged to his community. But he learned a lesson today that was a little different. So I'm going to show you what he learned. So who wants to hold the end of the rope up front? He's on to you, Laura. He knows. There's Who does Jesus love? Just you? Just you? Just Rita? No, who does Jesus love? Who? Everybody. That everybody is in God's family and deserves the promise of God's love. And that was something that Peter learned, that all the rules didn't matter as much anymore, and that everybody was a part of this. 
Amen? All right, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of your love. Help us to remember that everybody can have it. And the people said, Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, take your time. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. The book of Acts, which our uh, lesson was read this morning by Miss Judy, the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 39 reads, We are witnesses to all that God did. And just a couple verses later, verse 42 reads, To us who were chosen by God as witnesses. As we've heard this morning, we hear um, the, the text, Mark had talked about teaching, and Laura talked about welcome and expanding and all belonging. And I want to talk about how we are witnesses. All of these things tie together, and yet we are witnesses to these things, even if we don't always understand them, but more importantly, if we're not comfortable by them. I think that's partly where the rub is this morning, is how we are witness to things that we don't understand, how we are witness to things that we're not always comfortable with. This morning, we are reminded of God's ability to expand God's kingdom, moving in ways that don't always seem real easy for us to understand. We recognize that God works in ways sometimes that rock us to our very core, and yet we don't have to understand, we don't always have to like, but we are asked to be witnesses to God's powerful actions in this world. I share this story with permission. Talked to Mama yesterday. Talked to Mama a lot, quite a bit. March 17th, 2019. It was a day that would change the life forever for the Herzog family. Within moments, a simple act, something that had been done time and time before, the lighting of a fish house stove, would be an event that would cause an entire family to look at life differently from that time on. Individually and collectively, as a family and even us as a community, we lifted up prayers as God's faithful people and we asked, God, what? Fears were faced as Michael, his parents, his siblings, and his friends questioned from the depths of their souls, confessing, God, I don't think I can do this. This is just simply too much. But they surrendered their own understanding. They let go of their own power and their own ability to control things. And they said, I don't think I can do this. But God, I believe you can. And God did. God revealed himself through doctors and nurses and random staff showing up at just the most convenient time. God revealed himself through letters of encouragement from complete strangers. God was seen in the work of scientists, medical professionals, professing God's miraculous healing power. Science could not explain what was happening here. God has been at work in this family, and all of us have been witnesses to this miracle. When we think about it, many of us, almost each and every one of us sitting here today have had an experience, an encounter with God when our entire world seemed to stop revolving. You know those times when you can't even breathe and the air that touches your skin hurts? We have those times when we go, God, what are you doing? Why is this happening? We find ourselves like Peter from our scripture text this morning. That's what this story is like. That Peter is going, everything that I know, everything that I have been taught, everything that I believe in, everything that has been comfortable in my life, God, you are asking me to completely change it, and not just slightly, but whomp, on its head from anything ever known before. Peter says, God, I can't do this. But as your follower, 
I can be a witness to what you are doing. This morning, our text deals with God moving in such a way that causes almost a shockwave of God's expanding power, his love, his welcome, his forgiveness to so many people, people that don't look like his chosen people, people that don't smell or eat or talk like the first chosen ones. God expands his kingdom. Our scripture today talks about deeply held expectations and traditions and beliefs and ideas change for two men. And yet they serve as witness to God's work in their lives and God expands their realities in big ways. This morning we're moving through along our narrative gospel as we still will have our um, readings from the gospels. But we can, our, our narrative lectionary. So we're pausing from our primary teaching of our gospel and we're continuing on into the New Testament. And so we're in the book of Acts this morning. How many of you know this book? You don't have to raise your hand, but think about it if you really know this. It's called Acts because it's the Acts, the actions of the early church right after Jesus has been crucified and raised. And the overall thrust of this book of Acts is laid out in the first chapter where Jesus tells his disciples about the power of the coming spirit. Did you guys catch the refrain that the choir shared? I don't have the paper right in front of me, but I took a look-see at that again. It talks about, thank you, God, for your power being here so the work of the church continues. Jesus explains in this first chapter of Acts of what it means that the Holy Spirit continues to dwell among us. He said that the Holy Spirit would be in Jerusalem and then Judea and Samaria and even go to the ends of the earth. So Jesus' followers knew that God's kingdom would be for all people, for everyone throughout the world and that means for us as Trinity, we need to look at how do we be bearers of Christ's light and love and forgiveness to everyone. How do we do that? How are we witnesses to what God is doing in this world? This morning, the story of Cornelius and Peter is an intentional reaching out the spreading of God's love where God says, my gift of forgiveness and salvation is for all people. You guys know about Cornelius? He's a very powerful, highly respected Roman guard, and an angel visits him, and immediately he knows that this is a messenger from God. And we also have Peter, the rock, one of the closest disciples of Jesus, he has a vision that totally challenges his beliefs, those beliefs that were held since birth. The vision deals with dietary restrictions as laid out in Leviticus. I mean, long time history here. God reveals himself to Cornelius, a Gentile, somebody who may have heard of God but wouldn't have known of God's grace and mercy. That's not like us. We know of God's grace and mercy God also comes to Peter and says, go to Cornelius. You tell him about God. But what does Peter say? Does he say, okie dokie? No. He says, no way, God. I wouldn't do that because that goes against what I have been taught. Peter fights it and says, non-Jewish people and Jewish people don't talk. That's profane. That's unclean. That's really, really bad. I can't do that, God. But God expands Peter's expectations and explains this is no longer bad because I am at work here. And God says when I am involved, you need to be witnesses to that. God is calling us to expand who we are. We are to be agents in bringing about God's kingdom, sharing God's love and grace. Because there are people who need it people who are different from us. This text leaves a lot for us to think about this morning. I'm going to kind of wrap it up here because there's homework to be done. 
Your homework is two parts this week. First, recognize that God is at work, expanding each and every one of us, and that's hard and it's uncomfortable, but when it's God's will, we are called to be witnesses to that. Deal with that restlessness, because it means that the Holy Spirit is powerful and moving. Second, do what this text says. Be witnesses to what you see. How you see God at work, even if you don't understand it. Because when we get to share these miracles, this love, this forgiveness, this healing, we get to be agents in God's work, his witness throughout this world. I pray God's blessings to you this week. It's a big one. Recognize the blessings upon this journey. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, just a closer walk with thee. It starts with the refrain. So we're going to sing the refrain, verse 1, refrain, verse 3. And then refrain again if it goes with it. But just the first and third verse. Jesus is my Please rise as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You constantly change our perception of what the world is like. Keep challenging our entrenched views and assumptions that we might be open to the moving of your spirit in ever new ways, risen Lord. Risen Lord. Like Peter and Cornelius and all the founders of your church, we find ourselves living in changing times. 
Give us their flexibility and courage to deal with the world as it is and strengthen the fellowship of believers worldwide. Risen Lord, as you showed compassion to the weary and the vulnerable ones who sought you, so now have mercy on all of those who find themselves in difficult cir circumstances, the poor, the unemployed, the chronically ill. Bring your healing to those whom we name today, especially from our congregation, Chuck, Jim, Jack, Michael, Judy, Pam, Dwayne, Don, Sarah, Elaine, Lydia, Rachel, Colleen, Deb, Michaela, and all our service personnel serving this country here and abroad in any capacity. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, in thanksgiving for Caden David. Welcome him into the waters of your baptism and ignite his faith. God, we give you thanks for the ministry of Pastor Bob. We give you thanks for the ministry of Pastor Steve. Continue to bless them on their new adventure. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers and bring us closer to your heart as we listen for your answer. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that gift of peace with one another. Thank you. You may be seated, and we will now receive this morning's offering, giving back what God's entrusted to our care. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together as we've been taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As you come forward, kneel if it's comfortable. If not, remain standing. And if it's particularly challenging today, remain where you are and the ushers will assist us to you. All who believe in the true presence of Christ are welcome.
and preserve you and keep you in his love, grace, mercy, and truth now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song will sing verse 1. Verse 1 of Christ is alive, let Christians sing. And then we're going to go eat cake. We are disciples of Christ, called to live in faith and action. baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, but by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. So living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow. 
we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So mom and dad, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in this beautiful gift of grace and love of God, do you desire to have your son baptized into Christ? If so, mom and dad, please respond, we do. As you bring Caden forward to receive this gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Spirit, Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer and the Creed and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scripture, to nurture him in faith and prayer so that your son may learn to trust God and to proclaim Christ through word and deed, to care for others in this world that God has made and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your son grow in this Christian faith and life? If so, mom and dad, please respond. We do. Sponsors. Do you promise to nurture Kate and David in this Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in this covenant of baptism and with the church? If so, sponsors, please respond, we do. People of God, do you promise to support Kate and David and pray for his new life in Christ? If so, please respond, we do. And so, parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, parents and sponsors, please respond, I renounce them. Together, let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Caden's family to come forward if you'd like to help me fill the font. So kiddos, and come on up. Come on over here. I'll have you help take the pitcher and pour a little bit of water in. Yeah, you might not need that. So, there we go. Okay, come on up. Yeah, step up if you'd like. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Come on around. Here we go. So nice. Thank you. Can you step up? Come on up. Perfect. Put your hand up there. You got it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Come on up. There we go. Perfect. Anybody else? Come on up. That's awesome. Thank you. Wonderful. Anybody else? We're about done. Last call. Last call. All right. Okay. So kiddos, I'll have you stand back over here by the rest of the family, and if you could please pray with me, okay? We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you have taken delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit that the power of your living word for all who are washed through the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you, O Lord, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. That's your part. That's your cue. Oh, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. So this gown, how old is it? 94 years old. 94 years old. And it is with your family, right? Okay. It's okay. It's okay, just like we practiced. 
Here we go. All right. Kate and David, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very good. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth and cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Sustain Caden David with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. Do you see you back there? Huh? Let's turn you around here. Okay. Caden David, child of God. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just Caden. Okay, yeah, usually when we hear our middle names, it's kind of a scary thing, right? This is a good thing today, okay? Oh, gosh, Caden, David, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. What do you think? Today is your rebirth. Yay, I know, are you going to clap? You guys, I just love this. Oh, yay. Oh, good, good, good. Today is your re-birthday, my son. Or, yes, yeah, he is. He's one of my boys now, too. Yeah, oh, gosh. And so we, we remember this very special occasion. Oh, candle's back here. Yep, we changed it, we changed it. All right. And so we light the candle off of the Christ candle as a reminder that the light shines in the darkness. And so we say, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Don't blow it out yet. But on the count of three, okay, y'all turn around, okay? And y'all can help blow this out. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. All right. So welcome to the family, dear Caden. Yay! All right. Good. So thank you all very much. There, you can take that. I'll give some other things to you. All right. Here we go. Thank you, thank you. Yes, this journey is beginning now with our family as we have made promises to you and as you make promises to your kiddos, we walk together. Good. You all may return to your seats. I'll invite the congregation to please stand as you are able as Connie comes forward and we will continue with our prayers of intercession.